creating it is so cold. It's so hot that my little blue hair growths are all curled. <laughs> my hair's naturally straight. Oh. Happy Thursday, everybody. Good news. We are trending sort of everywhere. We are number seven on Apple Podcasts overall. We are number 10 overall on Spotify Podcasts. And this is just the first week of the show, only episode four. So exciting. But we are also trending all over Twitter and on the internet and on YouTube because I had an appearance on Piers Morgan last night. It was supposed to go for 30 minutes, but it went for an hour and a half. And this is what happened. Why did you leave the Daily Wire? A lot of attention has been focused on you constantly referencing Christ as King. So to deliberately use that phrase was a deliberate act of provocation to people like Ben Shapiro. I want every single person in the world to declare Christ as King, whether you believe them to be a Nazi, a white supremacist, a Jew, a Muslim. It is the phrase itself that I want declared. Who do you want to win the war? I don't want Zelensky to win. I don't want Putin to win. I believe Zelensky is just as corrupt. I believe no, he is don't. a criminal. What percentage of our population has to be killed before we can use the word genocide? It's a funny little thing. Carla. <laughs> you and him. She said here. Here to trade. Let's see what you got. Here's what I 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 got. Here's and it is established beyond any doubt that she was born a woman. Okay, so place, oh, 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 no. At worst, at worst, at, at best, pardon Brigitte Macron is a pervert. Ooh, he came for me last night, you guys. And guess what? I went right back at him. It really is a lesson in how the media works, how the media is constantly operating on our minds. And that is what we are going to get into today. All right, so we've been talking a lot about psychology this week, and it truly is the name of the game. When people get at that figurative matrix, oh, the matrix, what's that they're actually alluding to? What they're alluding to is the idea that there is an entire system, an illusory system, really, that has been created for us, that we are virtually enslaved to this system, and that our every action is being dictated by it, and that the majority of us are completely asleep to it. And so you wonder, oh, how could that be? Could it be possible? How could my actions be being informed by some system? And the answer, of course, is psychology. As I said yesterday and the day before, there are forces that are impacting your psyche every moment of every single day. And the biggest contributor to that is, of course, the media. The media black magic. But yeah, yesterday I joined Piers Morgan. And he told me it's going to be about 30 minutes. We're going to talk about some things, promote your show. And of course, I already knew. It was not going to just be 30 minutes. I knew he was going to throw everything at me. But I went anyways because I think it's important for people all around the world to see that you don't have to fall for these government and media initiatives. You can stand on what you believe and you can survive. And so, yes, it has been trending all over the internet. And I want to break for you guys in case you don't have an hour and a half to dedicate to me and Piers Morgan. Really the top five moments. So let's jump right into it. Moment number one, and of course I was expecting this, the mandatory Israel question. I don't know what this is, but 
apparently it's some sort of a religious sacrament that every media member has to go on and on and on about Israel. We literally think that I was an Israeli citizen, that we were all Israeli citizens. It doesn't make sense to me and many other people across the world why there is such an obsession and a focus on this country in the Middle East. They almost want to penalize you, to punish you for not focusing on it. And so yes, of course, Spirit Morgan came right to the table and tried to pretend that it was suspicious that I didn't tweet for days when a terrorist attack happened on a foreign country's soil. Take a listen. Hey, Carla. Hey there. Trading? Let's see what you got. Here's what I got. October 7th, you didn't tweet anything. You didn't tweet anything on October the 8th. And October the 9th, you tweeted so much war peace ever since we got the orange man out of office. So glad the adults are back in charge. Um, a lot of people say, well, if you care this much about innocent people being killed, why didn't you say anything when 1,200 people were massacred to death in the most brutal, barbaric manner in this awful terror attack by Hamas, and these 7,000 more were wounded, some of them catastrophically and irreparably? Why did that not prepare you to say anything? Well, first and foremost, uh, Israel is a foreign country, so typically I talk about topics that have to do with America. Secondly, you're only quoting my Twitter feed. I'm also on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram. I'm, I also had a daily podcast in which I did respond directly about what happened and called the events horrific. Multiple times, multiple times said what Hamas did was absolutely horrific. So you're using a snapshot of my Twitter feed where you're acknowledging that I didn't tweet for days uh, to suggest that I didn't have anything to say about what had happened. Now, to be clear, I am consistent on all matters. I do not want America involved whatsoever in anything that is happening in Israel. I don't want my dollars sent over to Israel. We should not be supporting Israel. Um, obviously, Thomas Massey has done a lot of work showing how it doesn't even make economic sense that we have so much debt, and yet we're sending money over to support Israel. And the biggest issue, by the way, that I have Israel, we're talking about them doing a false approach, is the fact that they are supplying the arms to murder Christians, okay, in Armenia the oldest Christian country in the world. And everybody talks about that. For whatever reason, it seems to be the circumstance that when Jewish people die in Israel, it's wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Hey, easy but when Jewish people die all over the world, nobody talks about it. Everyone wants to correlate everything to World War II. Everyone wants to talk about Adolf Hitler and the and white police who was a wicked person. But nobody wants to talk about Henry Piagoda, right? Nobody wants to talk about the Bolsheviks. Nobody wants to talk about the Christian Holocaust. I am tired of the media exhausted of the media not speaking about what is happening to Christians all around the world. And it is especially horrific while at the exact same time that it is happening, the slaughter of Christians in Armenia, the arms being supplied by Israel, that the media turns the other way and says, oh, okay, but what about Israel? And what about what's happening in Israel? You know what I'm asking for? Actual equality, okay? Because it seems like this is like a special category, the special relationship that we have. I'm a Christian first, okay? And so my concerns are going to be with what's happening to Christians all around the world because it is us. We are the number one most persecuted religion in the world. And all Christians watching this need to realize the time is now to start speaking up because we have been silenced about the things that are happening to us for a very long time. The media is very clearly not our friend. When there is wall to wall coverage of Christians being killed in Armenia, Christians being killed in Nigeria and the treatment of Christians in America and all across the globe today, then you ask me if I will use my platform and I will use my voice to speak about what's happening in Israel. How about that? Let's trade three things. That Pierce, and I'll tell you how about it went. Well, he obviously ended that part of the conversation immediately because there are aggressive double standards here. The idea that you can say to someone, why don't you use your platform to talk about this? And, you know, I guess 12 through Pierce is speaking. It turns out that no, that Armenian Christians are being killed and being bombed, and it is a fact that Israel is supplying the arms to do that. Here's what I can say. So why is he prioritizing Israel? He can't answer that question, so he wants to move on. But it's constantly this effort to manipulate you into focusing your life and your attention on whatever they decide to press their thumbs down on. And it's not right. And that is my belief. I am a Christian. Of course, I am going to use my Twitter feed. I'm going to dedicate my Twitter feed to things that are of interest to me. That is my right. I'm also an American. And I recognize when we look around that Americans can't afford gas, they can't afford groceries. And why can't we? Because, oh, we have the media convincing us that it is our job to be enslaved economically to the borders and the interests of everybody else. 
but ourselves, but our families, I don't stand for that. But what if you do, he moves on to, of course, I also expect it, trying to confuse or accuse everyone of being a conspiracy theorist. Well, I instantly did, as I feel yeah, bad yeah. at him, because honestly, we all understand, as we are living in this post-mainstream media world, they are the conspiracy theorists. How many times has the mainstream media tried to effectively sell us something only for time to pass and us to realize they were lying about everything. When they're caught lying about everything, they just try to backtrack. And remarkably, I said, here's, yeah, no, you peddled the BLM and the race conspiracy theories, and then you backpedaled. You peddled the COVID conspiracy theories, and then you backpedaled. He didn't like that so much. No, 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 no. He tried to backpedal even further. Take a listen. So do not take my one clarification about the ability of a vaccine to prevent transmission being some great near culpa that I so that, that's a huge that near culpa here. Oh, that's, that's, that's she's a huge near culpa. She's not near culpa because that means that you you want people to go out and put a experimental vaccine in their arm yeah. and, and encourage them not to listen to independent voices that were saying hold on. That's a huge near culpa. People died from the vaccine. Some of that died from not getting it. There have been scores of people who died from the vaccine. There have been scores of people like my grandfather who got the vaccine and then were dead within one year because it, it led to their dementia suddenly spreading and in you know, more advanced and around their life. I love you. I love you. You do not know the proper sounds of the vaccine. Okay. First and foremost, they have admitted so much. They lied about the six feet social distancing that just came out two weeks ago. And you are on the side of all of these people. So don't pretend that's a small deal. So far, people died from blood clots pertaining to the vaccine that you were telling them to watch out and get, okay? People so, died from blood clots. People 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 died from Maybe those people would be alive. Maybe my friends who have miscarriages and my friends who were saying that it was impacting their menstruation until the government was ready to admit that seven months later. If you had lists of people that were telling you their own experiences, so I know that went completely blind in one eye because of some weird ocular clock. So don't pretend that's a small thing. Don't I'm don't which, say, I'm I'm which, you know. Know. Just wanted to trade a few things. Don't pretend it's a small thing. People die from the back of it. It was caught. And then, no, no, by the way, no, I want to be clear for people watching this. He's saying still get it. I'm saying still don't. If you can hear it in my opinion, do not allow the government to put that in your arm. Okay. God's system works. The okay. government is not fixing you in okay. any regard. Okay. Honestly, they didn't know what to do with that. I mean, they are they are so used to being able to spike the ball. The experts, that's actually how he began it. I should have showed you that portion as well. But he starts talking about how the experts, you know, were confirmed and the scientific studies confirmed. And he's just making a small mea culpa. You know, he went out and told everyone to go get the vaccine because he thought, as he says, that it would stop transmission. Then he realized that, in fact, that it didn't. It's just a small mea culpa. Small mea culpa. I'm going to roll up their sleeves and to inject something into their arm. Just a small one. In which people have reactions to it. In which they routinely lie. In fact, they treated us people who said, don't get the vaccine. Like proper. The people that did not want to get vaccinated or feel like that person he pretty much continued that if you want to go watch this whole conversation when he starts pressing me in general about my perspective on that things not very clear. I'm not gonna lie and run from food I do. I talk back to my children. I have dedicated an entire show to diving into the history of vaccines. It happened during COVID. The first time people woke up to the idea that an entire ecosystem can be telling you something that is untrue. That has been going on actually for a long time. And so my job is to give people information. And of course, his job is to pretend it's all a conspiracy theory until the conspiracy theory is proven true. Which brings us, of course, to Richie Macron, who was trending. He was Morgan threw down the gauntlet and said one hundred thousand dollars, Candace, to prove that Richie Macron is a man. Now of course she did this for a little bit of theater when the author was, you know, Brigitte Macron is suing the journalists that worked on the story for three years uh, with genealogists and showed that Brigitte Macron simply didn't exist for 30 years. But her brother, John Michel Trobdeau, did exist for 30 years. And then her brother disappeared and Brigitte Macron suddenly arrived. And the two of them have never been seen together. And she refuses to answer any questions or produce a photograph of herself. 
The job is, of course, to make it look like these journalists and Candace telling about the tour. That is so crazy. So what's crazy is how easy it is to debunk the story, but to instead be taking people to court. So listen to what Aaron Morgan had to say about that. Why don't you evidence that Bridget Michael is trying to Well, I did an entire series talking about where this came from, and first and foremost, you're pretending that I'm the one that promulgated this. In fact, it was three journalists in France that worked on the story for three years, right. and, and they teamed up with genealogists. To, and they came across, and it was absolutely fascinating. I read the entire report, and everybody watching this, rather than listening to Piers Morgan, giving you a bunch of adjectives. Ridiculous. It's awful. I can't believe that she's saying this. Why don't you go pursue a primary source? Why don't you go find the articles that were in by the French journalist? This, this did not come from me. This came from French journalists. And while uh, they were working, wait, wait, let me finish the statement here. While they were working on this piece, the Macron sent their secret service to interrupt this. It's not a normal thing that you do when somebody's got to publish a lot. You just say it's ridiculous, publish it, more will it. They sent the secret service to intimidate these journalists. journalists. They took their phones and held them. They wanted to tell everyone who was working on the piece. And what they uncovered was absolutely fascinating. They uncovered the fact that Brigitte Macron, who alleged that the person that they are saying is her was actually her brother, who's never been seen, who was never produced, that Brigitte Macron lived with a man for 30 years and transitioned at the age of 30. So he's trying to tell you this is crazy, this is wacky. Why don't you just go pursue a primary source? Well, I don't I don't mean, primary source. It would be very easy to dispute this. All Brigitte Macron would have to do is produce a single photo of her in the first 30 years of her life. Or yeah. if her walk with her yeah. mother, she yeah. alleged that she's not. There would be a different kind of photos of Joe Biden. I mean, Joe, I mean, Donald Trump is a woman. Show me the proof. Okay, there are tons of photos of Trump 20 years ago. Oh, what are you saying? Okay. There's a mother. 30 years of living. Just show a photo of yourself. There's and there's a mother. Just show a photo of yourself. And as a mother yourself, you have no power about uh, causing Okay, I mean, I will please stop with the sensitivity. You are, you've decided that you want to leave a country, okay? Honesty is demanded. More journalists should be prodding into the story internationally to see what's actually going on here because at the best, you have a perverted story that in my, in my view leads way too closely into pedophilia. This story of how they got together was weird. You have an allegedly gay man, the person who's had gay affairs, and has spoken out, talks about the drugs that he has done with Macron, and you have these two people who are utterly demented in the state of France. Now, my friends, is how you stand on business, okay? You're not going to gaslight the public. I saw this clip, actually, and, and I can't find it on the internet, but it was just the Tate brothers, and they were talking about how wrong all of the experts and all the scientists were on COVID. So how is it possible that so many people from the wrong side of the past Hey, brother, you know, got it right. Not the experts. And what they implied is just all you have to do is live a little. Right? Yeah, a little bit of street smarts goes a very long way. All these people and their degrees. Do they have street smarts? Have you lived a little? Is it a normal thing if somebody is working on a story alleging that you lived as a man for three years? Somebody right now called and said, you know, the Daily Mail is working on an article that you lived as a man, Candace, for 30 years. Do you think I'm going to call the police and the FBI to get involved in the story? Using the arm of the French Secret Service to go intimidate the journalists, to hold them in a cell, take their phones, ask who else is working on the story? That does not make me think that you are innocent. That's nonsense. I would be like, publish the story so I can debunk it. Because you just don't go 30 years without having your photo taken. You just don't go 30 years while saying that you've got three kids without having your photo taken. It doesn't work that way. I'd say, here you go. Here's my high school yearbook, my middle school yearbook. Here's me as a baby. Here's me with my family. Here is a litany of photos that you can look through to establish the fact that the person who published this article is an absolute spook. But they aren't doing that. They're doing this with media journalists to say, oh, it's so crazy. I remember very, very wise actually tweeted from the New York Times and pretending to be like, so crazy that she said it's about Brigitte. Stop using adjectives describe people who have common sense, okay? Present the proof. You should you should just say Brigitte. One photo. One photo. And then they actually presented one photo ended up being Brigitte's daughter. Okay? There is a story there. The French people have been trying to get it out for years and the fact that they are using the court systems to intimidate journalists is not a good thing. So 
part of Islam when they use these sorts of tactics to stand up to them. And of course, it, this brings me to the one from which I just love so much is when they really got nothing wrong, they always do this appeal to authority. And here's Morgan wanting to remind me that he has degrees in journalism. He is a reporter, a real reporter. And who am I? Take a listen. Here's the difference between me and you. I've actually been a good reporter for many, many years. You never have. When you say you report on these things, I can tell you no journalist who's an actual reporter can read a legal filing and then do a tweet which states as, as fact in their own words, not in jail because he's a fed CIA asset. And if I've done one, that's not reporting wow. on a lawsuit, that is stating your own personal opinion. If you don't know the difference, it's because you're not a reporter. I have, well, now, now we've arrived at your professionality. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, Spears, Spears, tell me, tell me more. What, what school did you go to? How, tell me, tell me I went more. Went to Harlow Journalism College in Essex. Well, then we better listen to you guys. You heard them. We yeah. gotta trust the experts. And Piers has been a reporter, and he went to a journalistic law school. And therefore, whatever conclusions he makes are the professional and the correct ones. And we should definitely listen to Piers Morgan. I do know the difference between reporting on a lawsuit where you're one removed from the contents of the lawsuit and state the contents of the fact. But I don't think you do, because you've never actually been reported. That's the point. Burn. <laughs> Girlfriend did get me. I'm going to start talking to you guys like that. You're not a reporter. Yes, you're not a reporter watching this show. You're not a reporter. Now, what do you know about this? <laughs> I'm a reporter. I know things. I know how to read the lawsuits and what's to do with them. And this, my friends, is why the mainstream media has fallen apart. Constantly speaking down to people, making assumptions about people, talking about, I went to Harlow College, I got a degree in journalism. <laughs> you know, so you probably shouldn't get all the information from Wikipedia. I didn't take the bait, I didn't respond to him, but the facts of the matter are, I too also have a degree in journalism. In fact, I have more degrees than Piers Morgan does. I have a bachelor's degree in journalism and in English, and he just has one in journalism. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's why I didn't say it. But it is funny. He's a reporter. Lastly, and I think this probably was my favorite part, when he went on this whole bit talking about Taylor Swift being wonderful, because of course, you must also sacrifice yourself. He told me he was taking his daughter to a Taylor Swift concert. He didn't understand how I didn't use her. He didn't send me this icon. She's got so much money. She's got so much success. Of course, every woman should be measuring themselves according to the money, right? No. Take a listen. Who's your idea of a, of a feminist icon in the music business? Um, feminist icon? Uh, I think I'm going to but uh, a woman that is someone to look after, my grandma? No, no, in the music business. I, I think Hollywood, I think Hollywood is demonic, but I don't, I don't model myself after people like Hollywood. My right. grandma and all of this family called mom. You give her, you know, give everybody to themselves at the end of their children. Those are my icons. Those are my, like, feminist icons. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. We don't sue because it's never heard What do you mean you don't have a solution? What do you mean you don't think Hollywood is amazing? I don't. I think it's lame. I think the media is lame. I have way more fun looking and being inspired by the tons of women who listen to this podcast and then listen to the podcast, listening to people who actually strive toward having good values. What it means to have good values means to put faith and to put family first. And it begs the question, what kind of a future do you want to leave for your children? A life of freedom, peace, prosperity? We know, especially now, that these are not guarantees. It's up to us parents and grandparents to instill knowledge and the love of liberty in them. Public schools are definitely not going to do it. By now, you've probably heard of the Tuttle Twins. These books are absolutely blowing up. They teach kids economics, history, and the principles that make a free world. So if you've been waiting for the right time to get the Tuttle Twins books for your family, now is your chance to get an amazing deal. Just go to TuttleTwins.com slash Candice, and you will get the books for 40% off. Give freedom for your kids, and you'll be supporting the all new Candice show. That's at TuttleTwins.com slash Candice. So go, go, go. Or if you're like me, you read your kids' books every single night. And these are great books. 
read to their children. Yes, the Cuddle Twin books make the four ideas that build a free and prosperous world simple to understand. That's all I'm going to say on that. All right, guys, now it's time to get into some stories. But first, reminding you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And there really is not going to be many of these Santa's Cups left because we are almost at 2 million followers, which makes me so happy. <laughs> okay, just one story really to bring to you guys today. And it is a very sensitive topic for a lot of people. It's difficult for me to discuss it because I know people in my life that are going to through IVF treatments, I know these people are not doing it with any of them, they are just with a true desire to start a family. Well, the Southern Baptist Convention formally passed a resolution opposing IVF treatments, and it's obviously caused quite the stir. And their arguments are simply that IVF technology regularly engages in the destruction of the process. And of course, this is true. They are saying, quote, we grieve alongside the couples who have been diagnosed with infertility or are currently struggling to conceive, affirm their godly desire for children, and encourage them to consider the ethical implications of assisted reproductive technologies as they look to God for hope, grace, and wisdom amid suffering, and be it finally. That is what their formal resolution states. Again, this is a very hard topic because, as I said, I have friends that are going through this process and it's difficult when you are attached to a topic emotionally, like knowing how much they just want to start a family, to really think about the implications of what is being created with IVF and these things that are happening, these moral questions about the fact that first and foremost, what it has done is it, it's allowed homosexual couples to have children. What do you believe in? Do, do you believe in that? Do you think that that provides the best opportunity for children? Of course, it is it interrupting the natural biological process and gives the state a lot more power right, to decide what somebody can conceive. And my personal opinion is that it has become an industry that has so much immorality that is shrouded in. It's not, this is not to say that okay, I am sure people listening to this have gone this process because you want to have a family. But we always have to weigh things according to good and evil, right? How much, how much good is being bought versus how much evil is being brought into the world. Obviously, the Catholic Church, which I'm part of, is very strong on this. Uh, they are very strong on this. the science that is disrupting their abilities. We think about all of them that are having issues is the natural result of the hormonal birth control pills that they are taking that is disrupting their natural body from working for years before they even get to uh, the idea of whether or not they want to have children. They even think about that. It's why I have dedicated so much time into creating the Shot in the Dark series. A great time for me to tell you guys who are listening. Many of you have asked, when are you bringing that series back? I'm going to re-record everything, and then sometime in September, I'm going to drop that series. And we were beginning to just get into birth control and birth control history and looking into all the inserts, what they openly tell you about hormonal birth control that women don't consider when they're 15 and they go to the OBGYN and they tell them, here, take this food because you have acne. So it's a lot of things, and I think it really all begins with true education, not indoctrination and propaganda the ability of thinking that, oh, well, you're going to be able to decide when you have sex, and that's the beauty. You're going to have less pimples, and that's the beauty of birth control. we got to start thinking more, and we need to be able to pass real education onto our children. All right, guys, we are already somehow out of time, but now before I jump into some of your comments. First up, we have Nash Hill here. She writes, staunch pro-choice liberal here. Started watching Candace months before an unplanned pregnancy. Let's just say my unborn daughter can thank Candace and these preborn ads for changing my stance on abortion. Eight months down, a lifetime to go. Hang in there, mamas. Keeping your baby is a blessing. Even on your own, it's been difficult, but still made the right choice. The right choice is not always the easiest. I love this so much, which of course is the reason that we absolutely should talk about preborn right now. According to a recent report, Planned Parenthood continues to break in billions despite the dwindling clients. The biggest takeaway is that Planned Parenthood is generating vast profits, which includes millions 
that are coming from taxpayer funding. We are funding the death of children. It is wrong. It is barbaric. It is a civilization. We're sacrificing children and we're telling mothers that it's okay because we don't want to be bothered by having a child. We don't have the greatest blessing of my life to have children. So what we need to do as the people that are unwittingly funding these tax, we are our tax dollars, millions of dollars to support these people, is to make sure that we reverse it in our own capacity, to make sure that we steal the clientele from groups like Planned Parenthood, that we take these babies that they are trying to kill. And Preborn is able to help us do that. They operate on a very slim budget, rescuing over two hundred babies' lives every single day with no government funding. Preborn's network of clinics are situated in the darkest corners of the nation, competing head to head with the abortion clinics, and they need our help now more than ever. When you donate twenty-eight dollars to Preborn, you will offer a free or sign to an expectant mother like one that you just heard for is caught by the crisis. Once she hears that baby's heartbeat and sees that precious life, her baby's chance to save baby's life today, your tax deductible will gift will go directly towards saving baby's dollars. Just dial pound two fifty and say the keyword baby. That's pound two fifty baby. Or you can go to preborn.com slash canvas. That's preborn.com slash canvas. So that's amazing. That is a real person that's coming to me and saying that preborn is the reason that you made her make that decision, which is why also it's reminded to us to welcome people that have the wrong ideas because we all started with the wrong ideas. We're all changing every single day and we only do that do that through meaningful conversation and positivity and embracing one another and it's the challenge of the environment we live in, which is just so much pollution via bad psychology. I also have this message from the neck. I told you guys about this app. It's amazing. It allows people to directly message me, and I'm able to give them an audio message back. Now, of course, that costs a bit of money. I, I read comments for free, but I do love that if you have a burning question and you want to reach me, that you can join the Vinek app and, and, and pay a, a fee, and I just answer. I just answer on audio. But this person wrote to me this morning while I was on a walk. I guess I stumbled upon one of your answers, which intrigued me. You said in that answer that you have not vaccinated your kids. As a new father of a little girl, this has haunted me for months. I don't want to vaccinate, but I feel pressure to do so by my peers, especially her pediatrician. Thankfully, I opted out of all vaccines at birth. What did you do in terms of their school and like homeschool? Has it been a problem with them joining any sports programs, etc.? Yeah. Did you claim a birth exemption? And also, how did you find a pediatrician that was willing to work with kids that are unvaccinated? Most of the pediatric practices state they won't work with unvaccinated children, etc. I know it's a delicate subject, and not a doctor, lol. But any input would be immensely appreciated. It's precisely that because I am not a doctor and I produce that series of shot and dog, it is precisely because I am not a doctor that I hope you know that I am giving you my heart when I tell you what I did with my children, why I work, why I want to hurt my children. No, I did not tax any of them. There is a reason for that. For doing my research, I had a lot of questions. These are the things that peers pushed me on last night. What about polio? All of these things. I've done my research and I am certain this is what I believe and I want as I said to this um, this user on the net this morning via audio, I, I basically said to him, I'm bringing back the shot in the dark, as I told you guys earlier, but also that my children are young. It matters where you live. I answered him back and asked him in a key way here and kind of see we actually have why we apply for this exemption and have to honor that religious exemption down here in Tennessee. So you have to think about that. Where you are raising your children actually matters. Is it worth getting up and moving so that you can raise your children in a place that has the same values that you have, that have beliefs in medical freedom. For me, it is a definitely yes. There is no way that I was going to vaccinate my children, given the fact that I myself was injured from a vaccine, which is what led me uh, to do so much research for my children. And what I want to say to parents also, trust your gut. Your gut matters, okay? They're always trying to get you to dismiss your gut. That is divine. God is telling you something is right or something is wrong. And they will call that a conspiracy theory. No, no, your gut is not a conspiracy theory. Pay attention to yourselves and your feelings and your emotions about things. Um, it, for me, it is always worked out for me in the end. So what I will say to you guys is that tomorrow we will be airing an interview of Brianna Joy Gray. You may have heard this story circulating. Brianna Joy Gray, she used to be the spokesperson for the Bernie Sanders campaign. She is on the left. She then became a host on The Hill. She's been on that network for quite some time, and she is alleging that Shit. she was fired because she was not pro Israel. Very interesting. Yeah, we should definitely talk about that. So she'll be joining us tomorrow. 
for our Friday episode. It's just going to be an interview with her. And also, guys, some great news. Tucker Carlson has announced that he is on tour. So guess what? I have got some tickets that I can give to you. So right now, the first 10 people that log on to clubcandice.com and buy a signed Standis cup. So if you're watching this right now on the back end, the first 10 people, we are going to be giving you free tickets. Tucker Carlson, you can see him in Kansas if you wish to have Kansas with Charlie Kirk. Or... And Anaheim, California, we have those tickets. We'll be there with the bake. So go for it, guys. Clubcandice.com. First 10 people to buy a Standis Cup will be getting three tickets to see Public Paulson in one of two cities. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>
So, like, that's what I retweeted. You realize if I was in LA and I was on the show and I retweeted that, uh, and someone I would have been fine. Just... The thing about it, they would have told me to take it down or you're fired. That's my point. That's a great point. Yeah. Wait till October 11th. Okay, but that's just going the right way. All right, guys. So so do it. Keep it closet till then. Listen. We, we had met up with Janet Carano on, and she got canceled for far less than that. Yeah, it's far less. So it, it, it's quick. I mean, I'm not see that she went to free speed. Only if you're part of the right agenda. Let me tell you, let me tell you what's, what's great about common sense. You need all the ways to prevail. The common sense eventually prevails. Sometimes it takes a day. Sometimes it takes an hour of a conversation with a person. Sometimes it takes a year. Sometimes it takes a decade. Sometimes it takes 50 years, but trust me, common sense prevails. It, it's undefeated. Common sense is purely undefeated. <laughs> Try to say whatever you want about common sense. It's eventually going to dominate the marketplace. By the way, a couple of things when you watch this. So watch what's happened with common sense. Logan Paul just said Trump on. You know who represents Logan Paul? One of the biggest uh, 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 represented representatives in Hollywood that are liberal and all this stuff. This guy has Logan. He goes to Mar a Lago to interview Trump. First of all, Trump's campaign. Brilliant, brilliant move to get it to this audience on TikTok. Whoever's idea was to get the president on TikTok, brilliant idea. Whoever it was on, on the channel. You, you know who you are, credit to you, but have an name on. What has happened to America? He looked at the sitting there saying, let's all talk to the president. And then look at Logan, 864,000 likes. Got his podcast. What does this tell you? His audience wants to have this guy on. Now, if they've invited Biden, they said no. They've invited him. He said yes, so maybe both of them will go, maybe both of them won't go on. But it is what it is. This is what I do want to say. This is what I do want to say to all the fathers out there. This is, is it Father's Day this weekend? By the way, Father's Day and Mother's Day is not a national holiday. It falls on the weekend. And 
Father takes almost always forgotten about. But not if you watch TV podcasts, because we respect you guys. You know why? Because it is so hard to be a fucking today. It is so hard to discipline. We were having breakfast with Gavin O'Connor, right? Mm-hmm. The director of uh, uh, the uh, accounting oh, or the warrior. Absolute star. He's a boss. Okay. And, and uh, uh, his, uh, his wife, uh, Brooke Burns, I believe if I'm saying the name correctly, yeah. she was from Shallow How, Baywatch. We're having, we're having a, a, a breakfast. Two and a half hours. Breakfast? Yeah, lunch. What and, 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 and their daughter, a seven year old daughter, is sitting there. They always get out of line. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I'm looking at Dylan and Tico because, you know, they're doing what boys do. Yeah. And I'm checking them and I'm talking to them. And you see the girl looks at me like this, and they're just like, she's like, wow. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's how you, you got yeah, to do it. Boys with boys. Yeah. But anyways, we're having this conversation, and you see the value of great fathers. <laughs> the conversation was how powerful and how much he loved. It's father. Crazy stories. Yes. But it's about fathers. If you're out there doing your part as a father, you know, uh, picking up your responsibilities, not giving it up to somebody else to do. Wake up every single morning thinking about how to raise better kids, thinking about how to raise better future leaders in the world. I applaud you. I respect you. I want to tell you what we're doing this weekend, Rob. If you want to pull it up, we just launched a new uh, wallet. This is a wallet I've been wearing for almost six months. This is the only, I gave up my family wallet. I give up all the fancy wallets. I wear the value thing of wallet. Have it in brown and have it in black. And this is how it works. You've got cash in here. You put it very easy. Your ID here. You pull it out. Credit card comes out. It's very simple. I keep my card to you, my credit card to you. This is all I need. It's leather. Value team officially launched. We have a limited supply. It will sell out just like the number half sold out a couple weeks ago. Anybody on Father's Day that orders one of these wallets gets a free hat. Future looks bright, that bright hat for free. So place the order, limited supplies. You place the order, brown or black, you get a hat to sent your way as well. If you have a father, you want to give them something, give them this wallet with the hat. And if you're married, watching this, to all the ladies watching this, your husband loves the PVD podcast, order them this wallet for fathers and get a hat on top of it for free. Rob, they can go to btmerch.com to see it. And this is where the link is at, Rob. Let's make sure we put the link below as well. For those of you that are watching this, Spotify and Apple, Go to btmerch.com for the entire weekend of Father's Day. This will be there. However, I'm telling you, we don't have a lot of these. This is a few hundred of these wallets that we have. They'll be gone in no time. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, story I want to get into is Kevin Spacey, Pierce Morgan. I think it's kind of, you know, the story was going all over the place. I don't know about you guys. I watched the show. What is that one show that he had on Netflix? What was that? House of Cards? House of Cards. Amazing. And it's the only one. Yeah. We're, we're on our way. You know the story. We're on our way to go to Tuscany, Italy. A guy named Carl D. Moss, whom I've never met. We're Facebook buddies. And he claims he's a Republican, but he always gives a Democratic argument. We'd always go back and forth. She said, you got to watch House of Cards. And my dad said, you got to watch House of Cards. And then eventually, I'm like, guys, I don't watch shows. I've never watched shows. We're about to go to Tuscany. We're taking 50 of our guests to Tuscany. It was the most epic trip I've ever for different reasons. Those who were there, I don't know what I'm talking about. Tom, you were there. I won't even get into it. Now, that night, I come home. 10 o'clock. I sit there, and I watch. Hold up the story. See what I'm I'm mostly going to get on the bench, but I was really, really the show was ridiculous. Now, here's... Kevin Spacey on Pierce Morgan. Rob, which clip is this? Is this the one about the Clintons, or is this the one about him having no money? Bankruptcy and losing his okay. home. I want you to watch this, and I want you to tell me, do you think this is acting, or do you think this is real? Go ahead, Rob. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, well, it's funny you asked that question, because this <laughs> is... Where I have been living in Baltimore, uh, just being foreclosed on. My house has been sold at auction. So I have to go back to, the, to Baltimore and put all my things in storage. Mm-hmm. So the answer to that question is I'm not quite sure where I'm going to live uh, uh, now, but I've been in Baltimore for since we started shooting House of Cards there. So how long was that? I moved there in 2012. It's been 112 years. Well, not just this particular place, but this place has been my home and Evan and Lucy's home uh, since 2016. Why is it being full Because I can't pay the bills that I owe. Mm. Wow. 
postures. Are you, I mean, are you facing bankruptcy? And a couple of times when I thought I was going to file, but we've managed to sort of dodge it, um, at least uh, as of today. How much money do you have? None. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, you know, you have some sense of legal bills. I still owe a lot of legal bills. That you have have you have energy in debt. Yes. Do you want me asking how much you look? It's, uh, it's considerable. Really? Many millions, yes. The house itself is many. We didn't even live. Get back on the horse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me ask you. Tom, do you believe him or is that it? Yeah. They turn to the real celebrity when they go on these apology tours and they go on Oprah and they cry on Oprah and Tom Cruise jumps up and down on the couch and says he's in love. And we all sit back from all these episodes, all these things, and you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And you see it, you just doubt the celebrity because they're all professional actors. They're trying to put the spin. The one thing Kevin's opened himself up for, a lot of those things he's talking about are a public filing. And if a multi-million dollar house in Baltimore with his name on it, with the name of an LLC that he owns it under, that's why celebrities own homes usually, or a trust, you know, you can, it's, I, I believe him on that point, because it would be so easy to disprove and do the filing and say, you're full of crap, you're not being foreclosed on. So I think, for the millions in legal bills, I believe that, but I think there's also some play in it here, because... He has a couple other homes. He's got one in New York. He's got one in Malibu, supposedly. So he's got assets. And so he may be asset rich, but cash flow poor, and is deciding to walk on the Baltimore house simply because he can't do it. He's got to pay the legal bills. So I believe about half of it, but I have time with the emotion when celebrities do that. Benny, what do you think? Because I, they're just so easy to doubt. I did a video where I'm crying about where I'm not so many. I mean, I'm, people were furious because I was I'm an actor. That is, he is, let me explain something. I've watched House of Cards, the whole, until he was so big, <laughs> to come on the last season. He's one of the best. And even, this is the, this is the thing with Hollywood, he's so sick. He, even though, how many sexual assault, yeah. such a, like, he's, still, he's so good, people kind of tend to forget. He was making reportedly 500,000 per episode on House of Cards, per episode. He was in for six or seven seasons. He's worth, I think, in 2017, at least $100 million. It's acting. I don't know who 